a bit of a long time ago, and he is playing a deck... Unlike Baby Huey, a newer player. Exactly. Much, much newer player, having his most recent result in 2002. He's playing a deck uh, that you said would make... Uh, Jamie Wakefield drool is what you said. Uh, yeah, I don't. I, I'm not even positive about the word drool, but for sure Jamie would love it. Dre Trevor Watkins is playing a big fat black red deck. It's just a bunch of fatties with a little bit of removal. It's yeah, like uh, it reminds me of the Morinfin type of stuff he used to play uh, 17 years ago. Yep, it is almost mono black control with only one mountain, two Rakdos Guild Gates, and the eight. Uh, normal red black dual lands on top of 14 swamps. Yeah, mostly he's just splashing for a little bit of removal, you know. He's got Pillar of Flame, Dread Boar, uh, and then obviously Rakdos Return and yep. uh, Olivia. Also has the Rakdos key runes not only helping him fix his mana, but also helping him uh, attack occasionally. Speaking of fixing your mana, Huey plays a turn two Farseek. Trevor Watkins' first two plays are a Dragon Skull Summit and a Swamp. Yeah, absolutely. Now, Huey, as you will probably recall, is playing uh, Reed Duke Jund. Um, up until last round, had just steamrolled through uh, through the event. Um, he's 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 fought off a variety of eclectic deck choices. Uh, how is he going to fare against uh, Black Control? Yeah, he has this. To He's going to be in a much more uh, has to take a much more aggressive stance against this deck than pretty much anything he's faced so far. Uh, turning his creatures sideways. Probably not the sp spot that Huey wants to be in most of the time, but Huntmaster of the Fells isn't a bad place to start, and that's what he plays on turn three. Um, I kind of I kind of imagine that the most important cards here are Rakdos' return on both sides, right? Like, whoever Absolutely. casts Rakdos' return, I think, is probably going to win, but the uh, neither one has very many, so there's lots of little battles in the meantime. Yep. And here is a Pillar of Flame on Huntmaster, followed up by Tap Out for Olivia Volderon. Olivia, not an answer to Olivia as it used to be. Yeah, it definitely has changed the texture of the matchup that you, can, uh, that you can't Olivia Legend rule somebody else's Olivia. So if you're the one that's behind, uh, you know, if you play your own Olivia, they can just immediately untap and steal it, because it's already a vampire. Huey has found Rakdos Return. However, it's only for two. Which, which is the last two cards in Trevor's hand. Right, but he, yeah, which facing down an Olivia is not a super great spot for Huey unless he can deal with that Olivia in the next three or four turns, which a lot of possible draws, but if he doesn't have an answer in his hand. Looks like Trevor had uh, Giralf's Messenger, which is a four of in his deck, as well as the, that appears to be the basic mountain. It's a very Cedric Phillips move to play Giralf's Messenger in your control deck. Yeah, uh, with a with the hope of blocking with it someday Absolutely. and getting card advantage. Well, he does have Disciple of Bolas uh, oh. to try to take Mondo advantage combo. of uh, of Giralf's yeah he does Giralf's messenger sick very the rock like although this is greenless. In fact, on Trevor's deck list, he he called it uh, greenless Jund, which I'm not so sure is the correct name. Yeah, I, I'm not even sure it's not just uh, blue white list blue white. Yeah, you know, agreed. But. So Lifebane Zombie is going to snag a scavenging ooze from a hand that also include Huey's own version of Olivia, as well as a Dreadbore to be able to take out Trevor's. So Olivia's going to attack as a 4-4, having dealt one damage to the wolf on the opposite side of the board. Now we're going to see Olivia get Dreadboard, right? What else is, uh, what else is coming down? Well, Huey could play the Olivia of his own, which I imagine is, uh, is quite likely here. There you go. We have a 3-3, three, three, oh no, so sorry, a 2-2 two, two wolf coming in. He, he, Trevor elects to not block with the uh, zombie. Yep. And Huey is going to play his own Olivia with one card remaining in his hand after that lifebane zombie took one away on the previous turn. Trevor's deck is chock full of elimination spells though, so she, he should be able to find a way to deal with that Olivia. Currently, though, he is only going to be attacking for six because he only has the land in his hand. This is a pretty fast clock, though, because the Olivia is just going to grow and grow and grow regardless. Outside of killing the zombie, it can just feed off the wolf every turn and threaten the, uh, the Rakdos key rune. Threaten the key rune to never activate ever again. Yeah, Trevor's going to need to find something quickly. Something that you might expect to see in the black-based control decks that, he, that uh, Trevor does not have is Sign in Blood. Actually, a little surprised to not see any real card advantage 
engine at all, either staff of men, sign and blood. Um, he has underworld connections in the sideboard, but on top, other than that, yeah. no real good way to draw cards, other than Disciple of Bolas. As, hey, that's a pretty, if that's your main source of card advantage, <laughs> right. I think that you're hoping for a little much. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely um, not a super reliable card draw engine, particularly with just two copies. <laughs> Um, it's a little bit of an interesting kind of mid-rangey approach where it looks like 50% of his deck is a Rakdos zombie deck and 50% is mono black control. Yeah. Um, both of these players playing for top eight effectively because uh, it should be uh, it should be locked up for the winner being able to draw in the final round. Yeah, we were looking at the at the tiebreakers. Matthias in particular had a, had his eye on the tiebreakers for this round. And these two players in particular, they're the fourth and fifth seeds heading into this round. Huey's tiebreakers are massively better than uh, than everyone else with an X1 record. Trevor's also very good. Um, as we see Huey Jensen take game one in the manner in which you might expect, making an enormous Olivia after his opponent draws no elimination spells. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, when you have him on a two-turn clock, you know, it's really just check each turn and see, did you draw a removal spell? Yep. What do you think is going to come in out of the sideboard from William Jensen? Well, uh, I would anticipate that this is a slightly different matchup than Huey has had the rest of his day today, and therefore I would expect some slightly different cards to be able to come in. Chiefly, he's going to be able to bring in his extra Rakdos return, which I'm not sure he... Well, I guess you bring that in in a Jund Mirror. Have we had him on, on camera with a Jund Mirror yet? No, I don't think so. Uh, he's mostly been playing red aggressive decks, which is not where that card shines. Uh, he's also going to be able to bring in Acidic Slime, very powerful in this matchup, as well as Liliana of the Veil, Duress, and Underworld Connections. Some number of those will cer certainly be coming in. Uh, yeah, I definitely like the Underworld Connections and the Duress. The Duress because of other people's Underworld Connections and Rakdos' Returns, plus the ability to just hit a removal spell whenever. Um, the Rakdos Return, as we mentioned, probably the most important card in the matchup. It's unclear if he wants the Liliana because he's still not sure what kind of a deck Trevor's playing. That's true. He the could... Dross Messenger sends kind of a signal that Liliana's not where you want to be. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, if he if he suspects a black-red sort of zombie deck that drew too many lands... But uh, one with Olivia. But one with Olivia, yeah. Right. So if he if he anticipates an, a more aggressive deck that uh, that certainly makes uh, or if he anticipate more of a zombies deck that certainly means Liliana's not going to come in. Yeah, Liliana good against some aggression, but certainly not the zombies who just keep coming back. So what about uh, things on Trevor's side of the world? A very similar sideboard approach. He's going to have another Rakdos's return, two underworld connections, three duresses. Um, beyond that, if he wants to just slightly vary his removal uh, package, he has a few different options, but. Nothing particularly revolutionary, you know, like yep. who knows, maybe he brings in uh, a Sever the Bloodline just so that he has another answer to Olivia that can fight through duress, but... Yeah, I would, I would anticipate Sever coming in. Um, but the, the Mutilates yeah. aren't at their best against Jund. No, no, it's like a, it, it's a possible answer to Huntmaster the Fells, but it's not the, the sweetest. One option, he could potentially play Rack, uh, Ratchet Bomb. Ratchet Bomb giving him options against uh, uh, against Huntmaster because when it flips it's also a zero. However, I don't think it'll come to that. I think yeah. he's going to stick to just... There are a ton of zeros randomly. I guess not randomly, but there are a ton of zeros eventually out of the Jund deck, the Thragtusk token, the Huntmaster token, the Garrick tokens. And the Huntmaster when he and flips. And the Huntmaster itself, of course. Um, but on top of that, the, the best thing that you're going to be able to get is typically you can like get up to two and take out a Scavenging Ooze, but you have lots of answers to that anyway. Yeah, I think it's mostly going to be about uh, whoever Rakdos is returns the other person, because if you leave him with no hand, then it's clear you know the, the way is paved for Olivia to just take over. And one of the strengths of Underworld Connections is the ability to find both your Olivia and your Rakdos' return, as well as give you a layer of insurance so that in the event that you lose all your cards, you still have a way to be moving forward. Now, depending on what he thinks Trevor's deck is, he did see Rakdos, Kirun, and Lifebane Zombie in game one. Those are both three ones. So these Golgari charms might come in, which are much better against Underworld Connections. That's true. He so a suit, d depending on how game two goes, uh, I could definitely see Golgari Charm coming in for game three because he, he faced down an army of X1s in game one, or a pair of X1s in game one, and then Underworld Connections, if he sees it in game two, gives him a lot of options. Absolutely. And uh, a card that it, Trevor did not play in game one that I think is, he's really looking for is Desecration Demon. Yes. It is very, it is much stronger here than in a lot of other matchups, and Huey doesn't know that Trevor's deck can go that direction. He's thinking, okay, how do I beat Olivia? Desecration Demon kind of goes the other way. Well, it looks like Huey has the Guildgate draw this time, even though Trevor is the one that leads with the actual Rakdos Guildgate. 
Uh, Rootbound Crag not coming into play untapped. Huey has two man on turn two, but does not have the far seek. And Lifebane Zombie turn three for Trevor Watkins is going to Such reveal all of card. Huey's secrets. Yeah, that card is so good. Yep, so getting a Thrag Tusk, leaving Huey with just some mediocre burn spells and land, as well as an Olivia. Oh, there's a Huntmaster hitting on it, hiding yep. under there. So he can either take the Huntmaster or the Thrag Tusk. I think if you're Trevor, you want to take the Thrag Tusk anyway. It really, yeah, it's just a question of how fast of a game plan are you, you know, how fast of a game are you playing. Like if you have another Life Bane zombie, maybe it's the other way, but the Thrag Tusk is uh, a little bit bigger of a, of a problem. Yeah, especially against the... The, the mutilates and the ways, the, the multiple uh, answer ways that, uh, that Trevor has to deal with a Huntmaster. Yeah, and it also depends on what kind of removal did, uh, did Trevor keep in, you know, because Pillar of Flame, definitely a much better answer to Huntmaster than Thrag Tusk. True. So he is going to take the Huntmaster here. So that kind of sends a signal that he might have another life being zombie, but it's also just possible that he, uh, he just wants to have the most amount of speed possible. Yeah, and Huey does have... The only lands he saw were the two come into play tapped. Or no, these don't come into play tapped. They're only nope. the rootbound crag does, because he does have the basic swamp. Yep. So this pillar of flame is going to be able to take out the lifebane zombie. More cards exiled than in graveyards so far. Trevor moving to his turn. We're going to take a quick look at his hand. Lots of mana, it looks like. As and white bordered at that. Yep, and a sever the bloodline, among other cards. Yeah, it's interesting that he keeps the sever to deal with the Thrag Tusk because he's still going to have to, and there's Olivia too, which he's going to have to get rid of, but even if you sever a Thrag Tusk, they get the beast. Yep, uh, and Sever's going to take out the Olivia. Much more pressing concern there. <laughs> But I guess he wants to make sure that Olivia comes down on turn four so that he can sever that because yep. uh, he doesn't want to deal with the Huntmaster. Uh, but I don't Still know. more cards exiled than in graveyards. Huey has another Olivia here. Do doesn't have his fifth land, though. Yeah, which is good for Trevor as he is full of lands. Is that a barter in blood? That's what it looked like to me. Barter in blood. Yeah, I, don't, I don't see it on his deck list. Huh. Yeah, I'm not, I guess I'm not familiar with the new art. Sure looks like Butterm. No, Mutilate. Ah, uh, Mutilate, okay. Yeah. Fair enough. You got us, Trevor Watkins, giving all creatures minus four, minus four. And here's that Thrag Tusk. Huey finds the land. There's the new art for Mutilate. Trevor, I'm a big fan of the uh, the Torment Mutilate art. Yeah, there's something about the uh, the sheer horror. Um... I, I don't know though. I think I think Trevor's in in pretty rough shape. I mean, theoretically, uh, Arakdos Kirun can make things slightly awkward. Thank you, our director. Give us the old <laughs> art there. Yeah, Arakdos Kirun can make things awkward, but, but another uh, pillar out of Huey, and you know. Yeah, or another illumination spell of any kind, of which Jund is chock full of them. Yeah. Now an instant speed one would be nice. Simply, oh, there's Arakdos' return. That that was the biggest card. That's the thing he could do to turn this matchup around. And it's going to take care of Bonfire of the Damned, Mizium Mortars, and Dreadbore. Three elimination spells were what was left in Huey Jensen's hand. So now, Jensen, with the Thrag Tusk creating a pretty big board presence, how, oh, and, hey. the, and the scavenging is hey now. impressive. That's also very good against Trevor's uh, Geralt's Messenger, line. and also the, the Sever the Bloodline that was in the graveyard, Absolutely. which he was threatening to untap and use this turn. Yep, that was pretty big. No two ways about it. Trevor really needs to, uh, like, obviously, you know, a little bit of removal might go a long way, but a Desecration Demon might help. Um, an Olivia would be just absolutely fantastic. But uh, he doesn't have a lot of time. If he doesn't draw something next turn, he is dead. Uh, he is dead to the... Actually, is he one mana short? Are there any creatures in graveyards at the moment? I don't believe there are any creatures in graveyards at the moment. The Pillar of Flame and removed the Lifebane, the Lifebane Zombie from the game. And the Lifebane Zombie removed the Huntmaster of the Fells. So we have Geralt's Messenger and Rakdos Kirun with enough mana to activate it. That's on a pretty the solid turn. It's a very solid turn. If Huey finds Slim to none on top of his deck, he might find himself behind the 8-ball. Oh, there was one more creature, the, the other Olivia. So that's a start. Um, just slowly working, you know, removing the graveyard just for Val. We are definitely at a spot where either player drawing a removal spell could go a long way. You know, we see these games where uh, 
there are games where people get flooded on removal, and um, like when you have a fistful of removal, Rakdos' return can be just more brutal. Yep. But and Huey is unable to get past that first striker, so he just has to pass the turn after playing a land. Yeah, and the thing is, uh, Trevor can actually swing with Jarl's Messenger, right? Well, he can, um, but if it trades, the Scavenging Ooze can eat it before it returns to play. Yep. As well as the Thrag Tusk would also then grow up the Scavenging Ooze past the point of Rakdos Keyword. Yeah, I mean, the Scavenging Ooze would end up being a 5-5, five, a five, five, right? Yeah. So I'm not sure that, uh, that Trevor is in a spot where if he has nothing, if yeah. he has air in his hand, if he no. can attack yet. He's got to just maintain the status quo. Wow, that oh. is an aggressive swing with Rakdos Key Room. Interesting. Is the yeah. theory just that you can block with the Dross Messenger? Oh, and he's got another Messenger, so he's actually putting a lot of pressure on Huey. So he's just he's just getting into aggro mode at this point. Now Jensen's got to attack here with his Thrag Tusk, right? I think he has to. Um, I think that he would have accepted that trade had had it come from the opposite direction, and now he has to force the action. But now, it, but I mean, Trevor could afford to take the hit, though, right? That's true. Trevor if Trevor, if Trevor just takes it, he drops to 10. And he's winning that race. So, yeah, yeah, Huey just has to pass and use that Thrag Tusk as defense. Down to the wire. Either player, so many different cards they could draw to, to give themselves an advantage. Absolutely. Both of, these, both of these decks are pretty well designed towards living off of top decks. That's what Rakdos Return Mirrors do, is uh, one player discards their hand, and then the next player discards their hand, and we're all just living off the top. <laughs> Got to give it to Trevor. Excellent play on his part. He got the free damage in last turn. Yep. Um, and now he was forced to, you know, is resigned to blocking just to uh, to present a big enough blocker to hold back the Rectus Key Rune. Uh, it was definitely good to Trevor to earn that extra three damage. Yep. Trevor wants to find a way to deal with the scavenging news before he puts the Jarl's messengers in harm's way. Fortunately for him, Huey can't really attack. Right. I mean, we are definitely at a standoff and. Uh, both players, lots of potentially, you know, huge cards. Desecration Demon out of Trevor, maybe, or uh, obviously Olivia out of, out of Jensen. And either player could draw some amount of removal. Normally, draw some messenger are very good against removal. However, the scavenging is the, uh, the biggest influence on the board at the moment. Beast Token entering in to the red zone. Now, is this just... Yeah, at this point, Huey says, all right, I've got the biggest guy on the table. If you want to trade, my guy's going to grow even more. And Huey also finds the best possible top deck at this point <sighs> in the game. Tusk. Always carry two spears. Gaining five, presenting another blocker, presenting another body that that scavenging ooze can eat once it dies. Yeah, I still and think... Trevor has nothing but lands. Well, he's got one more turn, but he needs to draw Olivia, like, next turn. Yep. Uh, not a lot else he can do to take over beyond. He can try to just... Uh, like, if he keeps drawing removal and Huey keeps drawing air, he can just, you know... He could get uh, get out of it that way, but Huey definitely ending up with the bigger board at the moment. Now, interesting to note is uh, if he if he top decks Olivia next turn, he has an extra land in hand, which means that he can cast the Olivia, ping something, and steal it all in the same turn next turn. If he top decks Olivia. Wow, that is a because he does have that key rune mana. Yeah, that's a lot of mana. Yep, definitely Olivia on either side of the table is going to be extremely potent. Yeah, but beyond that, people just want removal. Huey's decided he's had enough. Interesting. Attacking with two creatures into the Rakdos key rune. What is the message here? The message is that he, well, he wants to deal a bunch of damage. Wow, Ooh, well, that's message the message. is he does not give a tragic slip. That's right. And so All now, right. the shoe is squarely on the other foot. Trevor is well behind the eight ball here any number of other metaphors you want to use. These Jarlf Messengers aren't going to come back onto the battlefield because Huey has three woodland cemeteries as well as a root-bound crag to be able to prevent any undying shenanigans. Yeah, and part of the problem here is that even if, Tre like, even if Trevor tries to quiet the board down and block a whole bunch, Huey will end up with a 6-6, six, six, lots of life, uh, you know, he'll have 18 life to work with, he'll have a 6-6 six, six in play, and he'll have a 3-3. Three, three. Trevor will need a removal spell just to not die in two turns, and he'll still need that 3-3 three, three to be answered. Um, he's got to find a way to get that scavenging ooze off the table. Yeah, the best that he can hope for now, I think, will Mutilate do it? He's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven swamps. Yeah, so Mutilate, definitely good enough. Um,
Desecration Demon wouldn't be the worst, but uh, it's only, you know, it, it can only be part of the plan. Yeah. Lots of removal spells, but... Yeah, oh. Trevor needs a Mutilate, a, a Tragic Slip would do it, a Dread Boar would do it at this point. Looks like just another land, though. Yep. One of the dangers of, of playing these uh, non-blue control decks, as you as you referenced in, in next level deck building, is that they don't have a, a, a great way to take advantage of mana flood. Uh, often, yep. Often not. You know, I mean, they can hope to bonfire or something like that. But. And, and that's one of the dangers. Is is exactly what Trevor's running into here. Is he just doesn't have a way to uh, to to so this get is the back game, right? into the game. And this is. Plenty of damage to a be top able deck to removal attack. spell. We talked about how good that removal is. Yep. Huey takes the match two games to zero. Very quick match for Jund. Uh, and we see our hero, Hall of Famer Huey Jensen, once again take the match against uh, old school local st uh, Salt Lake player Trevor Watkins uh, and his black red control deck, almost mono black, splashing red mostly for Pillar of Flame. And for Olivia, uh, and, yep. and for Olivia, uh, Dreadbore also very good because Mono Black has, sometimes has trouble dealing with uh, with Planeswalkers. Yeah. Um, but yeah, very very interesting deck and was able to do very well for him today. Unfortunately, he's probably not going to be able to make the top eight. You're at six and two, playing six, next round to try to top sixteen. That's right. Huey most likely draw into yet another big SCG finish. He's fresh off his uh, second place finish. Um, last week at, at Grand Prix Star City Games, the 961 person open in Somerset uh, two weekends ago. And he, that, was it Somerset where the team was that?